Well, the Nubo is pretty much far as I can get it from what I have to work with right now. So I am going to start the 907 Superboat. This is kind of a cool moment for me. I've been waiting to get going on this boat. And just the, the pieces, the, the engine, the pump, the whole everything is starting to come together. So this video, is, we're just going to start the process. And I'm going to take you through the entire process from start to finish. So here we go. <laughs> So I'm rebuilding the 907 to be, this here is your typical sprint boat, kind of taller sides, full sides, and the 907, like I said, I'm spotting these guys a lot of horsepower, 500-ish horsepower, so weight is my, my advantage, and I got to do everything to shed weight, so this is the old 146, much shorter sides, and then carbon fiber uppers to keep the water out, really, but it's still extremely stiff, this hole is very strong, it's just, uh, it looks a little bit different. So that's what I'm doing with this boat. Everything, everything has to have weight um, when considering how I'm going to put it together. That is my number one thing in this boat. I have to keep the weight down because I am spotting so much horsepower. So here is the very beginning process. I got some, uh, some old plate out in my yard that I was going to do a mini boat out of, a custom, but... Uh, Nature calls. I gotta, I gotta get going on this thing. So this is where we're starting out. I'm just laying out um, some 10 inch, actually nine and a half inch sides. I'm gonna get those cut and uh, get those down to the shop and have them uh, press break the uh, the top. The essentially, I'll I'll talk more. I mean, I'll show you right now. But essentially, if this is your this is your uh, the bottom of your boat, then your sides kind of come up like this. They usually lean out, and then you put a little gunnel into it. So I'm going to put the, take these in and get these bends put in here, as well as the transom. And um, that's why I got to get these cut out, get those down to the shop so that can get done, because I need those. I especially need the transom to put in that bottom plate before I start doing anything else. So I got the sides cut out, um, just touch up the, the sharp edges with a die grinder on both the sides of the edges there, and then I clean it up. This stuff was sitting out in my yard. It got kind of oxidized, so I just touched it up with a little sander. And one thing I want to point out on sheet, can you see the bow in that? Aluminum is not flat. It is rolled out, so every sheet of aluminum that you get has a curl to it. So... When you lay these things out, you want to make sure that it's going to get bent in the uh, in the direction that that kind of favors the natural roll instead of going against it. So that's what I'm doing uh, up 90 and up 90 to form the sides, and uh, that's pretty much it for the sides. I'll lay out the transom real quick, get those lined up, marked up, and get those brought down to the machine shop. And then I got a, another small project I'll tell you about when we get back. All right, so I just got back from the uh, machine shop. They said they're gonna have those to me by Tuesday, which works out awesome. I'm glad I kind of 
busted it out. I was sitting on my couch. I'm like, oh, I didn't feel like going out there to do that, but kind of just picked myself up and got my ass out there and did it. So got those ran down to can Fabrication in Marysville. They have massive 20-foot press brakes. It's a pretty impressive shop. I'll try to get some footage when I go in there to pick that stuff up on Tuesday, but pretty stoked that they were able to get that done for me. So and that's uh, moving the progress right along because I go to work tomorrow and I won't be really able to work on the boat till Tuesday. So that's going to work out good. So the, another little project I can, these are the, the engine bears for this boat. These are a little bit more stout, a little bit more robust, kind of a box, more of a box to them than just use an angle like I do on the 146 and a little bit heavier as well. Um, goods and bads it kind of gives the the hole a bit a little bit more rigidity kind of laterally and longitudinally if you will um and the only thing that i'm going to do here there, these already have come pre-cut with some lightning holes and access to get into the engine mounts and other things like that but like i said weight is everything for me with this boat in this class so i'm going to drill some holes <laughs> lots of holes I'll, I'll i'll figure it out this is a one and three eighths hole saw i'll figure it out with three sixteenths aluminum how many holes i can get out how much weight it, it's gonna be um just rough guessed a couple pounds maybe three pounds but hey three pounds times uh you know four g's uh there's 12 pounds uh, effective weight removed out of the thing so i'm gonna start getting laid laying the stuff out and getting those cut and uh, not a very exciting but that's all part of it it's not always exciting but here we go saw me drill that entire side of the engine bear and 29 holes on one side so i'm going to spare you the pain and agony of watching me drill another one some things i don't know if the, the uh if the time lapse picked it up or not but when you're drilling with one of these things when the pilot uh bit goes right through sometimes if you're not super careful that thing will grab and rip it right out of your hand that one ripped out of my hand about hit me in the face so did that one and this one was a doozy so you got to be careful drilling those uh, things it probably would make more sense to go drill with just a quarter inch bit and drill all the pilot holes and then just come in behind it with the hole saw it's a pain in the ass no doubt about it i know there's easier ways um i'm on a budget i'm in a two-car garage i do all this stuff by hand when i've been seeing some videos of a hand cut mini boats well this is a hand cut uh jet sprint boat so that's what this uh, this whole series is going to be about i'm going to take you through the entire process show you all the glory of drilling lightning holes and everything that i do so hang on for the ride uh, i will not show you the second uh, series so i'll get to cutting on that and uh, hopefully my forearms will have some strength in them left over i still want to haul the uh, the jig over here and get the uh, bottom plate placed in it and then I got to get going for work. All right, here we go. far so good that honestly wasn't all that bad at all um the jig man whipped that around with the truck popped right up here on the driveway the the plate the bottom plate wasn't all that bad the only thing i messed up is that i did the jig around backwards but it's on four casting wheels just gonna spin it around pull the bottom plate off i just wanted to show this jig though before i put the bottom plate on it you really couldn't see it so i bought this thing 
um, years ago. And this is the, the very first boat that I built, the race boat, was the 2.8, the one that Cletus drove, was built on this jig. This is the jig that it was, that boat and hole and design was to, made for. I've modified it a little bit. I kind of chopped off some things, but this thing is solid steel. It's not going to go anywhere. So you can, you bolt your bottom plate down to it and weld away and your plate isn't going to go anywhere. And it's kind of specifically fit for um, that boat hull. However, this is a different bottom plate. And even though it's within a half a degree of the same dead rise, so it's going to fit in here pretty well, but the bow transition probably isn't going to fit exactly right. I don't really care from what I've kind of learned over the years of building these things. I just need to clamp it and maybe bolt it in a couple spots and that's good enough. I don't need it to fit the jig exactly right. I don't need to bolt it down in 37 different places. You don't really need to do that if you weld it out in the correct order. So I'm gonna get this thing spun around, get it loaded up and call it a day. All right, well, here it is. Bottom plate, the super boat hole is officially in the jig and construction has started. Pretty excited about all this, to be dead honest, um, I'm stoked. So this thing is uh, fits in here really, really well. Um, like I said, it was within a half a degree of the original one, so I'm not too worried about that. I can shim the difference with a couple washers in between there. But uh, as you can kind of see, this, the way this bow is sitting in here, that this, these aren't really gonna come together because it's a different hole plate. That's, that's, the, that's the difference right there. So the difference between this boat and the 208 is essentially this gap right here. And uh, because it pulls up differently, a whole different bow entry. Um, but yeah, that's about the first really visible evidence of the difference between the two. So anyway, I'm gonna, Wrap this one up. I don't even know what I did today. Got the bottom or the sides and the transoms cut, brought to the uh, machine shop to get bent. Drilled out 58 holes. <laughs> oh God, sometimes I think I'm crazy, but about five pounds. But hey, if uh, if I'm doing it and somebody else isn't, then I'm winning. So anyway, and I got, the, got this thing here. So I would call that a good day, kind of a half day for me, but hey, the 907 Superboat Jet Sprint is officially under construction and I am stoked. Let's go. Thank you.